Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Molly Pope Art. This is a pansy painting tutorial that I have painted using acrylic paints. Um, I love pansies. I think they're such a happy spring flower um, and they range in all shades of, from blue to purple to yellow to white. Uh, some have veining and color variations that look like they have happy little faces and some have more solid colors on their petals. This tutorial is showing you how to paint a purpley blue variety with darker purple shading in veins. And yes, it does have a little face. I love the ones that have um, what appear to be faces, which is just basically the darker purple colors um, around the three front petals. Pansies have five petals in total and they are beautiful fluffy fluttery petals um, I have added a free how to draw pansy tutorial on my Pinterest page Molly M Pope so feel free to print that out and paint your own pansy along with me I will add the uh, link to that um, downloadable how to draw and um, that will be in the description area of this video and um, I'll also have the paint colors that are used um, to paint this pansy in the description. So I have already painted the back petal and I'm working on the petal to the left of the back panel and you can see I just used some um, ultramarine blue which is already a really pretty purpley blue it's one of my favorite blues to paint with and that color get gets added um, close to the base of the pansy down towards the center of the pansy and um, along with that I added a little bit of dioxanine purple which is a really deep purple I paint a lot of flowers with that because if you look at my um, video, other videos that I have. I do love painting blue and purple flowers. I think they're my favorite. Um, so that dioxane purple is used kind of um, to add sort of the suggestions of the veins on the petals. And so what I've done is working out from that center um, on each petal, they're darker towards the middle, down towards the center of the flower. And then I just continually added a little bit more titanium white out towards the tips of the petals. And again, pansy petals are very um, fluttery. They are sort of, they have lots of folds in them. And you can see that you can paint them pretty quickly. Um, I have not sped up this video. This is in real time. And overall, the entire flower is done in less than 40 minutes. So I hope you give this a try. Um, it's a lot of fun. And again, there's just five little petals. Pansies have two petals that are kind of in the back. And then there are two petals um, on each side to the left and the right of the center. And then there is a main petal um, on the bottom of the flower and that flat that petal overlaps the petals to the left and the right the petals to the left and the right overlap the two petals in the back so you'll want to um, add a little bit more shading to those petals around each side um, where they do overlap and I do have a separate video on how to paint overlapping petals um, I did that with zinnia uh, flower and I think it might be nice um, if you want to paint realistically to kind of watch that video it's a fairly quick video and it just concentrates on how you overlap petals um, to get some realistic effects so this this petal that I'm working on now um, has that dark little center for the face um, so I started with a little bit more heavier concentration of the ultramarine blue mixed with that dioxanine purple and that gets painted down towards the center of the petal and then I used a lighter concentration of color to paint the edges of the petal 
and that lighter concentration of color is just the same exact color that's used towards the base of the petal but I add more titanium white and um, that gets painted towards the tips of the petals and also where the petals overlap. Um, now I'm starting on the fourth petal and you can see um, it's a little bit of that darker color down towards the center towards what the face of uh, that pansy would look like and each of your petals do not have to exactly match one from the other um, I say this in a lot of my videos I think it's worth repeating that when you are painting realistic uh, flowers or plants leaves that sort of thing no two petals or leaves are exactly the same color or shade they can be variations of the same shades so don't spend a lot of time um, stressing out about whether your flowers you know one petal is perfectly the same as the other you want that sort of variation in your colors when you're painting realistic um, for that reason, it will give you a lot more realistic colors, um, a lot more believability in your painting if there are lots of variances in your um, petals and leaves that you're painting. Now, it's I worked from a live um, plant when I was working on this painting, working on this video for you. Um, and I did include a video, or excuse me, I did include a photo of the um, pansy that I worked from for, from real life in this video. So you'll see that um, in the video and you'll kind of see how even from life, like my real life specimen is a little bit different than my painting. And that's okay. Um, I'm not going for exact realism here. Um, it's not an exact replica of, um, my painting is not an exact replica of the real pansy. Um, so I see a lot of new artists as you're learning, you're really trying to duplicate exactly what you are, um, what you're seeing in real life. And I want you to know that it's perfectly fine to have a little bit of variances in your colors. Um, it makes everything look a lot more realistic and you shouldn't have to stress so much about what it is you're painting. Um, when you're painting, uh, you're painting your own creation. So it's perfectly fine to be a little bit different than what you're seeing in real life. Now, I'm starting on the very front petal, which is the largest petal. Um, and like I said, that overlaps that front petal overlaps the two petals to the left and the right. And I'm working on the little face area of the pansy. And you can see it's a little bit more a uh, stronger concentration of blue. Um, that will, there's lots of layers that go over this. So don't worry about getting the exact um, color. Um, the exact um, correct color that you see in real life. You can have some variances in that. And I'm now working on the lower portion of that petal where it starts to, as it moves out from the center of the pansy, it gets a little bit more um, fluffier and there's a lot of ruffles in that petal. So the edges also are not completely smooth. As you'll see, as I'm painting this uh, lower petal, you'll see and also the biggest tip I can give you is to wiggle your brush. Wiggle your brush, wiggle your hand, and you'll get nice fluttery edges to your petals working in this manner. Um, you want, it will already build in so much uh, texture and interest and really get the point across um, that this, pe this petal, um, each of the pansy petals are sort of fluttery. Um, with lots of little ridges and folds. So just the, this is where it actually works to your advantage to have um, kind of an unsteady hand. So you just want to lay your collar down, but then also sort of wiggle there. I'm doing it all again, sort of wiggling my brush, wiggling my hand 
so that it makes that petal that petal appear to have some little tech a little bit of texture and some ruffling to it now i'm going back over the face again um, on this pansy and just adding some different colors in there this is the beginning of the veins um, and you'll see I will switch to a smaller brush as I start to add some of the veining into that petal. And I'm just deepening some of the little ruffle areas on the petals so that it appears to have some folds in those areas. And that's accomplished by just painting, going back and adding a little bit more of the ultramarine blue onto my brush. Um, I rarely uh, clean my paintbrush when I'm working on petals and working on a flower. That also will help to give you um, some really beautiful variances in your colors as you're painting and get, you know, help you achieve that more realistic effect. Um, and here you see I went back up to the very first petal that I painted, or excuse me, the third petal that I painted. There's my inspiration photo. You can see the difference in colors. Um, and I want you to see that you don't have to stress out about whether you are exactly matching what you see in real life. And now I'm using my fine little paintbrush um, and adding some of the veining that goes in each of the petals. Um, pansies have, you know, the, this particular pansy has a really dark blue and dark purple veins that come out from the center. And um, if you look at, if you have the opportunity to see one in real life, you'll see what I'm talking about. It just has veins that radiate out from the center. So they follow the shape of the petal too. They're not, they're not doing their own thing and going their own direction. As you're painting, um, you'll notice that the, the veins follow the shape of the petal as it kind of fans out from the center. So you want your veins to kind of follow that fanning out from the center. So towards the center, they're gonna be closer together. And as you get out past the you know, middle of the flower, your veins should sort of spread out a little bit more. And while I'm working on these veins, I use a pretty watery mixture of paint. Um, so you want it to be kind of an inky consistency, and that way it flows off of your tiny paintbrush pretty smoothly and effortlessly. And I will mix a little bit of blue into that mix. I'll mix a little bit of purple. Um, I may even have two little different piles of paint um, in those blues and purples on my palette and they'll be an inky consistency which means just means I've just added a lot more water to that paint so that it flows really easily off of that tiny paintbrush and there's no worries if your lines end up being a little bit thicker than what you want you can just go back in and add um, a little bit um, of the background color and to get thinner lines you just basically use your tiny little paintbrush and you sort of paint right up next to and slightly overlapping your previous lines that you feel are too thick that will give um, really nice thinner effect of um, your lines it's a way to kind of cover up your what you think are mistakes um, but not really mistakes um, i use that technique a lot 
because um, it's really hard to get super fine lines on whatever you're working on. And you'll see you kind of have to work in layers. So I'm going back down, um, back over my previous painted um, little veins and um, adding and subtracting wherever is needed. Um, wherever the color, maybe it dried down, it wasn't dark enough. Um, so all the time you're working, you're kind of assessing what your painting needs. Um, so I also wanted to break the edges of that initial um, little face, the little darker blue areas on that pansy. Um, I wanted that those edges where the lighter color meets the darker color to kind of blend out a little bit more. So what you see me doing now is taking that lighter blue that's on the outer edges of the, the petal and sort of going up over the darker areas. And that'll help to blend out both of those areas and also make them seem a little bit more realistic and not so harsh. So those two areas will blend in nicely together and it will help those, that sort of line to kind of go away where the dark meets the light. I also use that tiny little paintbrush around the edges of the petals to sort of refine them and clean up the edges a little bit. Um, and also I've used um, a darker color to go around where the little folds are um, in the petals to kind of accentuate those a little bit more. And especially also where petals overlap each other. I use that tiny little liner brush to kind of refine those areas and help them pop out a little bit more. Um, so that'll help the petal that's in the front give it the appearance that it is actually in the front and petals that are behind, it gives them the appearance that they're behind. So again, I recommend you use that, you watch that video that I have overlapping flower petals um, just to kind of get a little bit more in depth on how you actually um, paint overlapping petals. Um, but that fine little paintbrush, you know, it works great for getting into the little tiny areas. Um, again, you know, I used it to clean up the edges um, around each petal and sort of refine and um, sort of clean up the edges and help to define those little overlap areas. Um, so right there, I'm working on a little overlap area and cleaning up the edge. I use my finger a lot for smudging. Um, that kind of helps to, um, soften your little lines that you add. So it's not too harsh and there's not so much, so much of a difference between your tiny little line that you painted. Now I'm beginning to paint the very center of the pansy. That's where the little yellow is. And there's a little, um, tiny little center to the pansy um, that if you look closely at them there's a little bit of like a little green area um, and so I used a yellow oxide or you could use a yellow ochre which is more of a golden yellow um, and I mix that with a little bit of white so that there's a lot more coverage to that yellow um, I also used a cadmium yellow medium um, that's a really bright yellow um, however it doesn't cover very well uh, now i'm adding that little green center to the pansy and i have used um, light olive green um, it's a really bright happy green i love painting with it and then outlined that little area with a little bit of hooker's green and you can see how that kind of makes that center area pop out a little bit now, in order to get a 3D effect from that little center, um, that hooker's green goes around the perimeter 
of that little center. The um, light olive green goes up over that edge a little bit. And then I used a lighter green mix, which is basically just mixed with light olive green, mixed with a little bit of white to get a really bright, bright highlight area for that little center of the pansy. And that will kind of help to make that area pop out a little bit. You may need to let it dry down a little bit and add it in some layers. Um, and then I added some, some veining with a little bit, um, I deepened the area around the edges of that little um, yellow inset area in the center. Um, and then also you'll see that I add a little bit of the dark purple, a very watery mix of the dark purple. And I blend those, the yellow area with the darker purple area, just like I did the, um, on the main petal of that front petal. So that really helps to add those little striations, those veins. If you have the opportunity to look at a real pansy, you'll see those little dark purple veins go up into the yellow. They're all intertwined and overlap each other. So you want to make sure that you're pulling some of that dark purple up into the yellow and then vice versa. You can take a watery mix of the yellow and pull it down over the dark blue. Now I'm working on the petals that are to the left and the right. Um, those side petals, they sort of fold over that little um, green little center to the pansy. Um, and those got painted with a, like a creamy color mixture of yellow and a lot of white. Um, and those are to simulate the little parts of the pansy um, that are on the petals to the left and the right of the center. Um, they kind of fold up and over the top of the pansy where that little green end set um, area is. And um, now you can see I'm adding that little bits of purple um, and blending out the yellow area into the darker purple area. And I think you can see what a difference that makes the pansy look. It really adds a lot of realism to that area of the pansy. When you start to blend those two colors together, taking that dark purple up into the yellow and taking that yellow down into the darker purple area really helps to make that pansy look realistic by blending those two areas together. Now I'm going back over the um, beard area of the pansy and adding a little bit more of a whiter in color uh, purple um, and just kind of pulling that down over that darker purple area. All right, so we are going to be moving into the final minutes of this pansy painting tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. <clears throat> and please, um, if you have any questions, um, let me know in the, the comment area. Um, and so the leaves 
are painted with a mixture of Hooker's Green mixed with Burnt Umber. I love, love, love this mix. I use it for almost all of my greenery when I'm first starting out, when I'm base coating my leaves or stems. Um, I rarely use paint just straight out of the tube. I am typically mixing on my palette um, whatever mixes, whatever I'm working on. Um, I almost always use at least two colors um, in my palette when I am um, working. Um, so again, those leaves are based with a mix of hooker's green and the burnt umber. It gives a sort of an olivey green um, to the green, um, which hooker's green to me is like a traditional sort of a Kelly green. Um, and it's just too artificial looking if you're trying to paint realistic leaves or stems. So it also is a nice... Um, darker mix of a green um, to get sort of that darker areas of this the leaves like typically your centers of your leaves um, where the vein is are a little bit deeper a little bit more inset so it's like the perfect green to use in that area um, and so I'm outlining my leaf in that mix and base coating the entire thing in that mix of burnt umber and hooker's green and then that is the color that is used for the stems um, and that is the um, area where that leaf is attached to the stem that all gets base coated in that color um, and I'm gonna let that I'm adding a little bit darker mix of that um, adding, by adding a little bit more brown to that color for the center so now I'm adding the stem. One thing I would recommend when you're painting flowers and any kind of plant material is to make sure your stems have a little bit of curve to them. No flower is completely straight up and down. Um, the stems are not completely straight up and down. So I always try to add a little bit of a curve to my drawing um, and then my painting on leaves and stems. They just look a lot more natural when you add a curve. So this pansies have two different, two distinct different types of leaves on the flowers. They have the original, the first leaf that I painted, which is kind of like that broad, sort of more flat shaped leaf. Um, and they do have a little bit of a curve inward sometimes. And then they have this little tiny leaf that I painted to the left that it has really sort of jagged edges at least on one side and then the other side if you look at it it kind of reminds me of a hand in a mitten so no distinct finger areas but the thumb sticking out to the side if you can kind of understand what I'm saying so they they all have those two distinct different types of leaves so kind of take a look at your live specimen if you have one, if you have the advantage of having a pansy there that you can kind of look off of and kind of study how the leaves grow um, and the differences in them. I always find it interesting to see, you know, how a plant can have those two completely different shaped leaves on them. Now for the vein on this pansy, I used um, a stronger mix of light olive green with a little bit of white added and that is sort of that limey kind of green that the veins have and it's also where you can see where the light sort of hits the veins. Um, I made it a little bit stronger on the up, upper side of the veins. I also added that color down the stem a little bit on the left hand side so it would appear to have some depth and dimension um, and some highlights to it. I also added it to the little le leaf on the side on the left hand side and I left the center of that leaf especially towards the stem darker so it would already have the appearance of having a little bit of curve to it and a little bit of movement in the leaf.
And I am continuing to build up the highlight areas on the leaves by just mixing in a lighter and brighter mix by adding more of the um, light olive green mixed with white and it gives a still a really nice bright leaf color um, and you can see where you can see where you started you see the darker areas on the leaves you don't want to completely cover that up you want to leave some of that darker area towards the center of the leaves um, you want to leave that show so I'm concentrating this brighter mix towards the edges of the leaves um, and staying away from the veins so you can still see those veins and you can still see the darker color kind of showing through closer to the veins um, I always try to have at least one side or where a leaf would be the sunlight may be hitting it um, it's a perfect color to add on the upper sides of that um, leaf now I'm going back in and sort of deepening the middle a little bit um, and just sort of breaking up that solid color especially if you feel like you made a mistake and you maybe covered too much of that dark center you definitely want to sort of assess what you're doing and add and take away as needed so again I'm using that going back and adding that darker mix in and blending those two areas out a little bit more and sort of refining my vein area And now I'm working on the other side of the leaf and sort of refining those areas once again. Um, I really wanted to um, refine the sides of that um, leaf on the right hand side so that it wasn't just sort of a flat um, looking dark leaf. And that edge of the leaf, I wanted it to appear that it was kind of turning um, back towards the light a little bit. So that's why the middle is darker still and I've just added some more brighter green on the tips of that um, leaf on the right hand side. Um, and then this is where you just kind of have to let your paint dry down a little bit and assess what it needs. Does it need to be have a little bit darker area? Does it need to have um, your highlights need to be brought up a little bit more? So these are the things that you are thinking about when you are working and you are comparing your work that you are painting to either your real um, floral specimen that you are working off of or your photograph. So this tutorial is just about finished. Um, I hope you give this a try. I hope you learn something. Please like and subscribe if you do. Um, drop me a question or a comment in the description. I'd love to hear from you. And check back soon for more tutorials. Thank you so much for spending your day with me. I really appreciate it. Take care.